Growth regulator symptomology, both the 2,4-D and the dicamba, what you're talking about is uh, distorted growth and development. It's affecting the hormone system in the plant. So you'll get uh, bending and twisting on the petioles. If they bend and twist, we call it epinasty. You might hear that term. It may affect the leaves, make them more strap-shaped. It could make the plant brittle. Callus tissue is formation around the, the base of the plant or on some of the tissue and that's undifferentiated growth on the stem. The main thing is, is that because they are what we call systemic herbicides, they move to growing points, that's where they're most affected. What you tend to see then is the injury symptom most prominent in the new growth and development. Not that it couldn't affect other growth, but that's where you're gonna see the symptomology first is in the new growth and development. Now symptomology can be challenging as far as a diagnosis because a lot of this is also rate dependent. So in other words, if I had a, just a full label misspray onto an adjacent field, I could see symptomology within two or three days quite readily, and it could be very severe. Okay? But the tricky part comes with volatility or small particle drift off target, where you're talking about a very reduced rate, but some crops are very sensitive to even very small amounts of the growth regulator herbicide. And in that case, the tricky part there is sometimes that symptomology won't show up for at least 10 to 14 days. So that makes it much harder when you do field diagnostics to pinpoint what went on. So you have this whole range of dates depending a lot on rate and how it got there. Soybeans are actually very sensitive to the plant growth regulator herbicides. Many growers have experienced through the growing season cupping on soybean plants and usually near fields that are adjacent to corn that have been sprayed with a growth regulator herbicide, which is the common use up into the point of this herbicide resistant technology. So they're very sensitive and uh, they, they differ. Uh, soybeans are more di uh, sensitive to dicamba than they are to 2,4-D, but that's not to discount the importance of either one as far as off-target movement. So we've talked a bit about herbicide-induced crop injury symptomology for the growth regulators, but this is certainly not an exact science, and there's always other look-alike symptoms that can be causes, other causes. One is just movement of growth regulators out of ditches, rights of way, and railroads and other places where they may use growth regulator technology. The other is if you had a post-emergence application of a group 15 herbicides, the acetamolins, things like dual outlook, that sort of chemistry. Sometimes it can wrap up the, or strap the bean leaf, or wrap up the, the grass plants in, in a manner that is somewhat indicative of growth regulators. And also you have viruses that can be a play here, and then the fourth one is the aphids. The soybean aphid can cause puckering, etc., on soybean leaves, but often the differentiation there is a lot of sooty, honeydew, mold, you have aphids on there, but you also have the ladybug beetles, and etc., on there as well. You know, you have to use your diagnostic skills to go beyond just looking at that physical injury.